Right down there, down there. Troops, welcome back to the Latana Army. I'm Litz, and this is Fortnite Save the World. And what I want to check out today is the three best heroes, or my three best heroes, if you like, and the three worst heroes, or the three heroes who I rate the lowest as well on there. So I want to kind of share both sides of the coin on this and kind of look at three heroes who I think you definitely should get hold of, and three heroes who I think probably not really worth it, or just collection book them, or whatever you want to do with them. So what I've done, I've done quite a bit of research on Reddit. I've also looked at White Sushi's guide as well, because I use that as a resource all the time. It's linked in all of my videos in the description go and check that out down below and before we get started what i want you to actually do is write down below just pause the video for a second and i just want you to write in the comments below your three favorite heroes or your three favorite soldiers should i say because we're looking at soldiers today down in the comments below so i want to do what i want to do is actually get a bit of a general consensus i've had a check on reddit to look what people are thinking on there but what i want to do i want to get your input as well as to who your favorite three soldiers are so go and pause the video write your three people in the comments down below if you want as well tell me a little bit about the soldier as to what it is you like about them so you know for example if it's the master grenadier it might be that she's got great aoe on there and that's kind of your play style but let me know down there which one you like the best so without further ado let's jump in i'm going to work from the third slot up to the first slot and then we're going to take it from there so stay tuned and let's go and check it out Okay, so the third place for me then is this guy, the Raider Raptor. I absolutely love this guy. If you're a fan of the channel and you're watching the channel regularly, you'll have seen me playing this guy a lot lately. I've been doing a lot of shotgun reviews and things like that because I've had such good fun with him. He's so much fun to use. Now, he does huge damage from shotguns. He can survive where a lot of other soldiers wouldn't, and I'll explain why in a second when we go over his skills. He's got AoE debilitating shots, making him super useful. You know, the AoE debilitating shots basically weakens the enemies while you're firing at them, for those of you that don't know. And it just means that either you or your teammates can take waves of husks out much, much easier. And he does that using his shockwave ability that he's got on there as well. And he's also, you know, he can attain damage outputs... You know, very similar to some of the top heroes. White Sushi compares him to one of the top heroes on his spreadsheets. And you can see on there, you know, why he's good. And when you use this guy, you can actually see. I mean, some of my videos, you've heard me say, you know, I can't believe we survived that. I can't believe we've just come out of that alive. And this guy is a true survivalist. All right. He's not got the survivalist name on there because there is a survivalist <laughs> subclass out there. But, you know, this guy is an absolute beast when it comes to, you know, using him in game. Now, let's just have a really quick look at his stats. I'm just going to fly down these because we've got quite a lot to get through and I don't want to drag the video out for too long. So what we've got on there is advanced tactics, which all soldiers get. So that increases your ranged weapon damage by 10% and your health increase by 10%. You get shockwave, which is important to this character because he's someone who's got to get in close. He probably would have been my number one slot if that wasn't a drawback to him. He has got to get in close to do the kind of damage that you need to do with him. You've also got debilitating shots on there. Again, another important one. He applies the debilitating shots with the shockwave, which you'll see in a second. He's got shell shock, so now all your shotgun damage is increased by 24%, making all your shotguns pretty much, you know, not quite OP, but making them extremely deadly. You've also got survivalists, so when I said this guy can survive where a lot of others, you know, a lot of other characters can't, killing an enemy with an ability or weapon recovers 5 base health per second over 3 seconds. Kills reset the healing duration and will not activate on full health. So he can actually come out of some extremely bad situations. Un well, not unscathed, but he can come out really well and he can still get out of them even when a lot of heroes like, you know, I don't know, like special, like the Special Forces characters or even the Urban Assault can't always get out of them where this guy can. He's also got frag grenades as well. I think every soldier should have frag grenades. It's like constructors with the uh, decoy and stuff like that. There's certain skills that I like to see. All right, not all the best ones have got these, but there's certain skills that I like to see on my favorite soldiers. I think all my favorite soldiers have actually got frag grenade on them. You've also got perfect engineering. So applies three stacks of debilitating shots to all enemies hit by shockwave, which makes him perfect. So if you are in close or you're even in a spawn point, for example, you hit the shockwave, all the enemies around you now have become weaker, which is, it makes him an absolute beast. You've also got I Love to Reload. So reloading the equipped weapon increases run speed by 30% for 3 seconds. Again, if you're going to be in close, sometimes you need to get out of there. That's actually saved me a few times, you know, more times than I like to count. Underneath that, you've got Critical Blast. So increases shotgun critical hit damage by 70%. You can pop Warcry on there as well, which is great because Warcry is a great skill. Uh, for those of you that don't know, again, I'll just quickly skim over this. So give Warcry affecting friendly characters within four tiles. Grants 45% more damage for ranged and melee weapons. Also grants 30% attack speed for ranged weapons and 20% attack speed for melee weapons. Durability lasts for 10 seconds. The effects of Warcry do not stack. You could put First Shot Rio in there if you wanted. 
uh, and to actually make that last a little bit longer. I think she adds another five seconds or three seconds onto there as well, making that skill even better. And then the last two, Knee Kappa, this is one of his best skills. Increases the effectiveness of debilitating shot vulnerability to 9%. And then you've got Flak Vest as well. And this is when I'm talking about survivability. Reduces the damage taken by 60%. Reduction drops by 15% each time the soldier is hit. Regain 50% every 10 seconds if reduction is lower than 60%. And he's right up down below, says so a close quarters battle expert with a focus on shotgun perks. And let's face facts here, it looks absolutely awesome. Look at him with the shotgun shells on him as well. You know, he's absolutely fantastic in all areas. So the main, like, you know, if you like, the main things with him are he's got big damage from shotguns. He can survive where a lot of soldiers wouldn't. He's got the AOE from debilitating shots, making him a great team player. And he can hit the same damage as what a lot of the top tier damage characters can do as well. His only drawback is that he's got to be in close range. But overall, this guy is an absolute fantastic choice for anyone who likes that close quarter fighting. Okay then, so this one might be a bit controversial. Not everyone's going to agree with me on this one. But First Shot Rio is probably at the minute my go-to character. She's my favourite character to use. I don't think she's the best, which is why she's only in the number two slot. But she's definitely my favourite character at the moment. Do you know, the thing about First Shot Rio is she's got the sustained war cry, which gives her extremely strong DPS. A lot stronger than what most people give her credit for. And it buffs the entire team as well. The only drawback really is that she's got no real wave clear like the, you know, some other soldiers have got as well. I would like to see more wave clear on her. So you can do on your own a little bit when it comes to fighting the husks. Or when it comes to, uh, you know, fighting waves at a time or, or fighting large groups of husks. You are relying on other characters' abilities. Do you know, people like who we've just seen the Raider Raptor to actually weaken the enemies for you. But let's have a quick look down her skills as to why I'm using her so often. So as what's going to be on all the soldiers here, then you've got advanced tactics. So range weapon damage increased by 10%, health increased by 10%. You've got war cry as well. Now this is this is key for her. Usually what you'll find is whatever skills up here is what the character or is often what the character is going to be centered around. And this one's no exception. So you've seen war cry. I've just read it out to you from the Raider Raptor. So you know what war cry does. So it grants 45% more damage for range weapons and melee weapons and 30% attack speed for range weapons, 20% attack speed for melee weapons. So you've also got debilitating shots on there. So dealing range damage applies one stack of vulnerability, just like the Raider Raptors got on there as well. And then what you've got on there as well is locked and loaded, uh, locked and reloaded, should I say? So after reloading, rate of fire is increased by 25% for five seconds. Now I didn't think that I thought that was going to be quite lackluster, but it's not. I tried using it with the Tiger, and it actually works really, really well. And if you use something, what you don't want to be doing with this character is putting the mag size on your weapons. You actually want her to reload kind of all the time. Um, you can use it with carbide. You know, carbide's a good slot. You know, to have with first shot reel. It's not, I don't tend to go with carbide. I tend to think that the reload speed on most weapons is acceptable, if that makes sense. But you know what you tend to find is the reload rate, once you've reloaded your weapon, as long as you've not got a huge mag size like a Mercury LMG or something like that, or the Founder's Drum Roll, which we used yesterday, that then weapons don't tend to work quite as well with first shot reel. But something like, you know, something like a Siege Breaker, Nocturno, um, or, you know, the Silent Spectre, for example, work really well. I've actually, I'm actually building up right now a separate Silent Spectre just to use with first shot reel that goes with reload speed instead of using the mag size on there. You've also got practiced in combat, so increases the duration of Warcry by 5 seconds. You've also got on there practiced in combat, so increases the duration of Warcry by 5 seconds, meaning she can put out even more damage per second because she's got all the buffs that you get from Warcry on that, for that, that just for that little bit longer, making her an absolute beast when it comes to using that. You've also got as well on there as well, first assault. So the first bullet fired after reloading an assault rifle critically hits enemies removed on a weapon switch. So when you're reloading, that first bullet that hits also does that as well. Can you just imagine all this damage is stacking up right now? She's got the damage from Warcry. She's got first assault on there as well. She's got the improved rate of fire on there. It just all comes together in this beautiful crescendo of death, what she puts out there, which is absolutely fantastic. I missed out frag grenades. Frag grenades, as I've said, is on all the heroes that we're going to be looking at today, which is why I've missed that. You've got inner pinch, so it increases the weapon reload speed by 35% if the magazine is empty, which is why I'm saying you don't really need carbide on there. If you do use carbide, you know, the reload speed is insane, but you don't really need it, as I said. She can reload quick anyway by herself. She doesn't need the buff from carbide to help her do that. She kind of is self-sufficient there and does it on her own. She is quite a loner, uh, you know, a bit of a loner character in that sense. A lot of the skills, what she needs to help herself, she kind of does herself. The only bit where first shot reload needs help is for AoE. She has got Shockwave on there, which is okay. Do you know, that's quite good uh, on there. So the Soldier is a Shockwave, knocking back enemies within one tile, dealing 7,959.5 energy damage 
Perfect Engineering applies three stacks of debilitating shots to all enemies hit by Shockwave. A lot of the reasons why I love Raider Raptor is for that reason as well, because you've got the AOE debilitating shots, making it pretty, you know, pretty damn good when it comes to dealing with crowds. But as I said, that's all she's got. She's got, she's not really got enough, I don't think, to make her a fantastic wave clear. She's got the frag grenades in the Shockwave. She's got enough, but she's got nothing as meaningful as the next hero that we're going to look at to actually stop them waves coming through. You've also got Kneecapper as well, so it increases the effectiveness of debilitating shot vulnerability by 9%, making that shockwave much, much better. And then you've got Blitz as well. So move 25% faster and gain energy 10% quicker for the duration of Warcry. Again, another thing that makes her Warcry work just so, so much better. Now, Warcry takes about a minute and a half to come back up. But because you've got the, you know, you've got this as well, the increased duration of Warcry by five seconds, it just makes it a really, really good hero because all them skills come together then. And while ever you've got that up, every minute and a half you can put that up. I think it's 90 seconds. So every minute and a half you can be popping Warcry and then she's an absolute demon when it comes to it. You've got a minute and a half where she's, you know, not like Lustre, you know, where she's still good. But you've got, you know, after that minute and a half so when you can pop that war cry, then she becomes an absolute demon character, which is why she's in my second slot. <laughs> so no major prizes then for guessing who's still got the top slot. The urban assault head on that is still the absolute king when, or queen, should I say, when it comes to the soldier class. Just absolutely unrivaled. The thing is about the urban assault is you've got the headshot damage on there, the rate of fire and the reload speed. Now, she can be a little bit ammo intensive, don't get me wrong. But, you know, the grenades that she's got absolutely just melt mobs when it comes to it. Because she's got the keep out ability as well, which we'll have a look at in a second. Couple her up with someone like Double Agent in the tactical slot. And she's she's pretty much invincible, as I said. I mean, she's really, really good. Um, one that I think most people have got or should have. Now, there's other variants of her. You've got the new Sledgehammer hero. You've also got Skull Trooper Jonesy as well. But any variant of this class is going to be good. I like to use the classics, you know, so I like to use a standard urban assault headhunter. But let's have a quick look at her skills. So you've got advanced tactics then, so increases damage by 10% and the health increase by 10%. So you've got going commando as well. I don't tend to use it all that much, but the good thing about it is just great for wave clear again. If you find yourself getting swamped, that again has saved me countless times, especially if you've got, you know, trouble in blasters or you've got three or four blasters who you can't get rid of, pop going commando and you can take them down super quick and it absolutely melts them. Debilitating shots. So, you know, you all know what that is now. We've, we've spoke about that twice. I'm not going to go over that a third time. You've got lingering pain. So this one's great. The vulnerability effect from debilitating shots can now stack up to five times. Steady aim reduces recoil by 29%. Really good for the things like that Founder's Drum Roll, the Hacksaw, uh, or even the, uh, what's the new one that's come out? The Drum Roll is pretty cool. The Tommy Gun weapon that we've got out there. So it's pretty good for that as well. That's got that side recoil on it as well. You've got Shockwave as well on there. You've also got Quick Clip. So it increases reload speed by 30%. So again, she kind of does her own reload speed. Quite self-sufficient there. No need for Carbide with this hero. You've got Make It Rain. Love this one as well. Headshot and enemies increases range weapon damage rate of fire by 25% for 5 seconds. That is nuts. You just put a Tiger on. A Tiger's the best weapon to test that on. Just put a Tiger on and watch how sluggish it feels at first. And then you hit one headshot with that and you just watch it go. It's so good to watch and it's so good to see. So a Tiger with Make It Rain is an absolute great combination. But if that's not enough, she's also got Rain Faster. So it increases the rate of fire of Make It Rain by another 25%. So it's absolutely nuts. You know, you can just, you can see it. it's so visible when you're actually in game as well that you can see that absolutely all come together and she just puts out crazy rates of fire on there as well. Frag grenades, every soldier should have it. And then the two last ones, she's got kneecapper. So increases the effectiveness of debilitating shots by 9%, which you know about. And the last one, now this one's a little bit special. She's got keep out. Leaves a residual energy field doing 15% of the initial grenade blast damage every one second over 10 seconds. It kind of puts like an electrical field out, and if the husks walk through it, then they just take, you know, they just take damage as well. Again, giving her a ton of wave clear options, making her pretty damn decent, I would say. So she's a rifle-focused soldier who gets bonuses for successful headshots. So what you've got on there as well, do you know what I would go with? So looking, let's just have a quick look at the support and tactical slots that I would use with these ones. So for the raider, I would use either another raider, because the bonuses you get from that is adjustable choke. So increases the rate, the critical rating with a shotgun by 18. He's, that's probably the best one to have with this one. So if you've got a raider, just use another variant of the class or another, another, you know, another raider raptor if that's what you've got. And put that in the support class and you'll not do too 
too bad at all. I've been using the Reclaimer quite a lot in that second slot as well, just to test him out. And that seems to work quite well. If you look on there, you know, increases energy damage by 20%. So it's pretty decent as well to have in there. If you've got energy shotguns, you know, the Reclaimer is not a bad shout to put in there as well. So for the tactical slot then, I would probably go someone like Wukong, like a Berserker. So replace the Shockwave knockback with increased impact and 2.5 seconds of enemy stun. So that one's pretty good as well, because this guy, you know, because the Raider Raptor uses the Shockwave quite a lot to get his debilitating shots out, having the extra stun on there, using Wukong makes him extremely viable. So then, let's have a look at the support slot and tactical. It's pretty much going to be the same for the Urban Assault as it is with First Shot Rio. I would probably go for the first one with Master Grenadier. That's not Master Grenadier, is it? Where's Master Grenadier gone? No, she's in there. There she is. I've already got a link look. So with her, I'd probably use her because she's got increased assault weapon damage by 24%. It's just another buff to put onto two great characters. So I would use Master Grenadier Ramirez for the Urban Assault Headhunter and for First Shot Rio as well. And anyone who watches my videos regularly knows I use the double agent all the time for these two classes because she's got the cluster bomb. So what that does is you throw a bomb and it releases six cluster explosions around the impact site that each do 12.5% of the original damage. And it just means that you've got a little bit extra AoE on First Shot Rio when she's not got a quite as good AoE as the other characters just makes her a little bit more viable and a little bit more usable. First shot real, I was so close to putting her in that first slot, but as I said, I think that the Urban Assault, I don't know, I can't really take her off the top just yet, but first shot real is definitely an underrated character at the moment. So let's just look at the three characters who I wouldn't pick then. Now, the first one is this one, the Demolisher. I'm just, I wasn't a fan. Now, look at the, you know, the outfit on there is amazing. It's one of the best outfits in the game, I think. You know, compared to any character, she's got the chain mail on. She kind of looks like something from Highlander, which is what I think the theme they was going for, which I'm a huge fan of. I love Highlander. But, you know, it's just one of them, one of them classes that just doesn't really work for me. What you find is she's grenade focused, but she's just lacking. She's not got keep out, you know, like we've just seen with the Urban Assault Headhunter. And she's not quite as good as what the Master Grenadier is. She's not got the, the quite, you know, quite as good impact uh, on the grenades as what the Master Grenadier has got. So she's one of those. I wanted to like this character. I thought this would be a great wave clear character, but just found her a little bit lacking. The second hero I find not too fun, if you like, would be Sergeant Jonesy. Now, you do need Sergeant Jonesy because he has got a really good support squad bonus. So he increases assault weapon critical hit damage by 36%. Now, I want that. You know, that's great. I just can't bring myself to use him. Again, he's one of those. He's a very bland character, I find. He's great support, but he's just lacking in most areas. He has got a little gimmick on there, because what he can actually do, if you look on his skills, he's actually got going commando, and he's got war cry as well, which actually bond together, so you can actually use them to put out some in, you know, absolutely insane damage with him. But other than that, that is about it. You know, he's just not quite got the edge for me. He's someone who, I like him, he's okay, but he's, he's definitely one of my, you know, one of the last characters I would go to if I was using a soldier. Now, this one a lot of you are going to disagree with, <laughs> but I'm going to stick to it. What you find with this one is, this one is the support specialist, and this is one that I got in the birthday alarms, if you guys saw. I was really excited when I got her, because a lot of people have been saying how great she is. Oh, you need to get Marine Corps Ramirez, and I was like, yeah, I finally got her, this is fantastic. And then I looked through her skills, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so she's got no kneecap or ability on there. Uh, she's durability during Warcry with launches is great. So, do you know, what happens is, if you look at this skill down here... She's got this skill at the end. There are many like it, but this one's mine. It's a reference from Full Metal Jacket, another great film. But your weapon takes 45% less durability while Warcry is affected. So you pop Warcry, pop a rocket launcher, and you can pretty much spam rockets into your enemy, which is pretty awesome. She's also got some good ammo recovery, increases ammo capacity of all weapons by 40%. Again, these just, and she's got ammo recovery like the Bullet Storm Jonesy on there. She's just not someone I would use. I think her skills are pretty much all over the place. And, you know, I just think that she'd be better off. You'd be better off with, there's just so many more better characters out there who are just better put together than that. All right then, guys. So that's all we've got for now then. So let me know who you think, you know, who your favorite characters are, who your favorite soldiers are in particular. Hopefully you've commented down below already who your favorite soldiers are. But I'd love to know why as well. Make sure you let me know, you know, a bit of detail. The more detail, the better. I love it when you guys write lots in there. Uh, and don't think I don't read them. I read every single comment on every single video. Um, it's hard to get, you know, I can't, 
Uh, I can't always get around them all. I can't reply to everyone nowadays because there's too many. I used to, uh, and I do try, you know, but the more that you write, as I said, I do read every single one. So your messages are getting through to me. And again, I just want to say, I've said this on a few videos recently. I just want to give a massive thank you to all you guys uh, for all the support you're giving. We had a really long chat in the Discord last night. I was up to like 3 in the morning last night. In fact, probably closer to 4 a.m. last night. Uh, just talking in the Discord with you guys. And I just had some great fun meeting you all. Uh, we had some great suggestions for the Discord that we're going to do. And for videos as well. We've got a suggestions tab now, which I massively appreciate. So massive thanks, guys, for being so supportive and making the channel what it is. I couldn't do this without you guys. And I just wanted to say that it means a lot. So without going all slushy on you guys, don't forget to hit that red button if you're not a subscriber already. And I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.